Hi guys, welcome to the Cuban Missile Crisis Lecture. All right, this is going to be 13 days of absolute fear. All right, uh, the closest the world has ever come to an all-out nuclear war. Uh, the Soviet Union, United States, along with Cuba involved, um, come very, very close to absolutely destroying each other through nuclear weapons. So let's take a look. All right, the goals of this is let's figure out who was involved, all right, what events took place, and then how is this crisis resolved? All right, so May of 1962, um, Khrushchev makes a veiled reference to a plot. The United States had placed nuclear weapons in Turkey, one of our NATO friends. Um, and so Khrushchev kind of asked, you know, how would the United States feel if missiles were pointing at them as we had pointed missiles at them so close to their land? All right, so Turkey is right here. The Soviet Union and all their satellite nations are right here. So we had uh, nukes in Turkey pointed at the Soviet Union. And, of course, they're not going to take it very well. They're not, they don't really like that. All right. So... Cuba, let's take a look at how close Cuba is. Uh, the capital, Havana, is only 104 miles away from Key West, um, actual American land. Okay, um, To put that in reference, from Madison to Chicago, it's 122 miles. So very, very close. Okay, So let's take a look at the cast. We have Nikita Khrushchev, the Soviet premier at the time, our president, John F. Kennedy, and the Cuban president, Fidel Castro. All right, Fidel Castro is going to come up and help the communists overthrow the government of Cuba. So Cuba is going to become a communist country, and he's going to become the dictator of it. He's going to then align himself with, uh, with the Soviet Union. Okay, so he declare Fidel Castro declares himself a communist. All right, he's going to seize U.S. properties in Cuba. All right, and what that's going to do is Eisen, President Eisenhower is going to cut off diplomatic relations, meaning we're no longer trading with Cuba. We're no longer traveling back and forth. All right, uh, this uh, trade relationship can be even seen today. If you go to Cuba, you can see a lot of old uh, 1950s American cars there. Uh, you know, we're not sending them any new cars, so a lot of their cars are really old. All right, ten percent of the Cuban population goes into exile. Most of them are going to flee to the United States. All right, at first, uh, Fidel sends all of his prisoners and all of his criminals, and they're going to come across, and he's going to send them to the United States. All right, um, and also people running from uh, from the communists, the people who would have fought the communists. All right, so the Eisenhower administration came up with this idea of invading. Cuba to take down Castro. <clears throat> All right, it becomes known as the Bay of Pigs. So the Cuban exiles are going to team up with the CIA and they're going to plan an invasion to take down Castro. Uh, the plans go horribly wrong. The Cuban exile forces never make it off the beaches. All right, they're either killed or taken prisoner immediately. So this is a huge embarrassment for JFK. He has to pay the ransom for these people in food and medicine. All right, and this comes out publicly uh, to the world. It's a huge embarrassment. We tried to invade Cuba and we failed miserably. All right, as I said before, the Eisenhower administration had come up with this. So when JFK goes into office, he inherits this plan and um, is the, going to be the president in place when it's carried through. All right, so the Bay of Pigs, the invasion site was right here. All right, um, as I said, they don't make it off the beaches. They're either killed or captured by Castro's army. All right, next, what is going to follow is the Cuban Missile Crisis. So Cuba is very paranoid that the United States is going to try another invasion on Cuba, so they're going to reach out to the Soviet Union. All right, what's going to follow is um, absolute terror for the rest of the world. They're just kind of holding their breath as we are very, very close to full-scale nuclear war. You have to understand at this time period, the United States and the Soviet Union have enough nuclear bombs to absolutely waste and destroy each other. Okay, and if we fire one nuclear bomb, we're firing all of them, and they're going to do the same thing back to us, okay?
<clears throat> so we send uh, once again our YouTube spy planes are going to fly over Cuba and what we notice is they have missile ready tents all right so a missile will stand up inside these tents all right the tent would come down at launch time and then they would launch from here all right we also have other launch positions that we had seen in fuel trailers all together we see eight missile trailers and you can see them on the picture taken by the YouTube plane right here uh, very long so clearly they have some big missiles under there all right and here's a close-up picture of these uh, missile tents all right and hiding in here are uh, missiles with nuclear warheads attached now these nuclear warheads that are attached um, they're 50 times more powerful than the atomic bomb that we dropped on Hiroshima so imagine the devastation there's eight of them there okay uh, absolute massive devastation so uh, Khrushchev's gonna send these weapons to Cuba uh, including nuclear missiles all right, the two types of missiles he sends are medium range ballistic missiles and intermediate range missiles. <clears throat> JFK, once we find these, we make it public. Hey, we know what you're doing. All right, if you fire any of those, you're going to be triggering, uh, we're going to be triggering a war on you. And have no doubt about it, once one nuclear weapon is, or bomb is sent, all right, we're going to be sending a lot of ours and we're going to send them right at the USSR and at Cuba so you know one missile fire on either side is an all-out nuclear war where we're gonna absolutely destroy each other all right so to take a look at this the darker yellow color are these medium-range missiles okay so they could hit Washington they could hit Chicago once they were fired from Cuba all right they could totally way late or <clears throat> lay waste to the East Coast pretty much and then these intermediate range uh, ballistic missiles um, they would finish off the rest of the United States the only part that is safe is up here uh, Seattle and part of the West Coast so they'd be able to hit anywhere inside the United States pretty much all right this just shows uh, some of the missile sites here all right so JFK has two choices his first choice is he can order an airstrike on these missiles in Cuba however if he does this um, it will be an act of war and it's going to be, and what's going to end up happening is probably an all-out nuclear war with the USSR. <clears throat> we want to avoid this at all costs. So his second choice, okay, um, he says we're not going to do this because this is going to trigger an all-out war. His advisors tell him another choice is to blockade Cuba. All right, we're going to send our naval ships and surround Cuba. So no ships are going to come in and no sh ships are going to leave. Okay, and if any uh, Soviet ships try to enter Cuba, we are going to sink them. All right, if we fire at one of their ships, this is an act of war. This will trigger an all-out nuclear war. All right, Soviet ships do continue to head to Cuba, so this is this is a really scary, scary moment. We have a line. You cross this line, we will fire at you. We will sink your ships. This will be an act of war, and once an act of war is uh, is set this is going to be an all-out nuclear war all right so you can see just our naval ships were in the Atlantic they're in the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico we are surrounding them nothing in nothing out all right so we kind of stood eyeball to eyeball with them the Soviet ships are coming they're coming and all of a sudden they stop okay they immediately stop and we all kind of breathe out you know we're not going to end up going to war Khrushchev agrees to remove the missiles um, if the United States promises not to invade Cuba again. <clears throat> um, and so we agree on that. We're not going to invade Cuba, uh, and they're going to remove their missiles from there. Also, secretly to the rest of the world, we actually are going to agree to remove our missiles from Turkey. Um, we don't tell the rest of the world this, so it looks as if... Uh, President JFK is this huge victory over Khrushchev and Khrushchev is going to kind of be embarrassed in front of the world that he lost this stand standoff. Um, JFK's brother Robert F. Kennedy said for a moment the world had stood still because if those ships had continued to come we would have fired at them and in fact we actually did fire at one of them. Um, one of their ships the Granzi crosses our quarantine line um, we actually fire missiles over the top of it and then it stops okay
All right, so this is the closest the world has ever come to a nuclear war. As I said, if we fire one, we're going to end up firing them all, and we're going to be firing them at the USSR and Cuba. All right, Khrushchev loses major prestige around the world for giving in to the United States. He looks like the weaker one. However, Pre President Kennedy is going to be criticized for practicing what we call brinksmanship, all right, bringing things to the brink, testing whether or not... Um, an all-out nuclear war is going to happen. He he had to make some choices. He had to stand his ground, and because he stood his ground, he almost brought us to the brink of uh, extinction. All right, but then he's also going to be praised for uh, his leadership and his cool head. Okay, he he played it safe. He was calm. Okay, and he didn't make it any worse than it needed to be. But it came very, very, very close. Uh, to an all-out nuclear war between the two major world powers. All right, just a update on Cuba today. Um, this is Fidel Castro right here. All right, uh, he steps down in 2006 temporarily, and then it permanently steps down in 2008. His brother Raul took over. Right, still a communist country today. Um, some restrictions have been eased on travel, and in fact, just in the recent year. Um, we have opened up uh, travel relations with Cuba, maybe also to um, start up our trade again with Cuba. And so now you are able to travel to Cuba before you could not. And that ends the, this ends the lecture. Thank you.